It is Wednesday, February 1st, 2017. I'm Israel Anderson, and we need to talk. Please support my efforts in citizen journalism by liking, sharing, and commenting on these posts. You can subscribe to the podcast, open your podcatcher, and type in the RSS feed URL, which is simply israelanderson.com slash pod, P-O-D. It'll come straight up. You can also subscribe on YouTube, and you can also subscribe on SoundCloud, and you can find these also on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash official, no, Israel Anderson official. There you go. Rex Tillerson was confirmed by the Senate today and immediately sworn in, well, a few hours later, by Donald Trump, President Donald Trump. Sometimes it takes a little getting used to to say that. I've actually said President somebody else a couple of times. That wasn't real good. But Rex Tillerson, he is the CEO or former CEO of Exxon. He's a man that has had incredible experience in the Middle East. In fact, I read today, I did a little bit of research on him. He actually almost started a war with the Kurds over oil. Interesting guy. Now, I like pretty much everything that Rex has to say. He wants to bring an end to the wars. There's one thing I did not like, and that's his stance on Iran. I don't understand it. I am very open-minded. I thrive on information. I want data. And if somebody can show me that Iran is a true threat and not just a hyped up threat by the United States government and the media, then I'll buy it. I'm, I'm, that's fine. But show me the data. All my entire life, I've never seen anything that convinces me that Iran is even remotely a problem. I mean, the rhetoric against Israel, who cares? I really don't care. Uh, re- rhetoric is, everybody has rhetoric. It's just, you know, schoolboy bullying nonsense. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't mean that people are going to die. So we hear things like Iran is the greatest sponsor of state terrorism, or the greatest state sponsor, rather, of terrorism. Well, if that's the case, prove it. Where's the bank accounts? Where's the wire transfers? Where's the money that's gone to other people? Now, if it exists, that's fine. I'll believe it if you can show me the data. But in my entire life, I've never seen a single scrap of evidence to convince me at all that Iran is a problem. And here in the American church, and those of you that don't know me, I spent my entire life in ministry. Here in the American church... The hate for Iran is hysterical, and it doesn't make any sense. If you're wondering where the accent's from, if you're brand new, I'm an immigrant from New Zealand. And New Zealand wasn't blocked, by the way, by the 90-day freeze, just so that you know. But I I just, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I don't understand the hate for Iran. I don't see they've not started a war with anybody in over 130 years. Um, as far as I can see, they should be one of our greatest allies. Uh, we should be friends with Iran. Uh, if, we, if we were friends with Iran, instead of installing the shore and overturning their government, overthrowing their government, um, then there'd be a lot more freedom in Iran today. Iran used to have a secular government. Women used to go to the beach in bikinis. Not anymore. Not since America's intervention. So, you know, it's not that I'm pro-Iran. I've got no reason to be pro-Iran. Same as I would, I mean, no reason to be pro-Sweden or pro-Canada. I'm just, well, you know, it's like somebody saying that Canada is the largest state sponsor of terrorism in the world. Really? Prove it. Don't just say it. Prove it. And I, I struggle. I've struggled with this for a long time. Show me the evidence. Show me the evidence. I'll believe it. But until then, well, let's just leave the hate for Iran alone. All right. So the bombing in the Middle East continues. And I keep being asked about this. What? Why is it not stopping? It's been almost two weeks now. Well, if we look at everything else that Donald Trump has, has done so far, I mean, he is following through. Stopping all of this mess requires his people to be in position. Mattis was only just sworn in. Today, the Secretary of State was sworn in. He was delayed for some time by those Democrats. I'm going to give him some time. 
there's you know we've been bombing these people there's so much turmoil there for a long time i i'm not going to have some absurd expectation that it's all going to be done by the end of this week now the pentagon now has the responsibility to come back and give a 30 day so they have a 30 day um, window in order to come back and give a plan to deal with isis I want to share some information on ISIS just real briefly, and some of you are going to think I'm, I'm nutcases, but I want to put it out there because I'm not sure anyone else has. And um, not, not to be first, but just to be first. <laughs> A little bit of ego there, I guess. Um, have you ever noticed this odd relationship that Donald Trump has with John McCain and Lindsey Graham? You know, Donald Trump actually said about John McCain that he wasn't a war hero. Really said some very vicious, I, I would say beyond hateful things about him on the campaign trail. Never apologized, refused to apologize, was put on the spot several times by the media, uh, almost who almost demanded an apology, wouldn't give it. Not interested. No apology from Donald Trump. Why does Donald Trump have such a problem with John McCain and Lindsey Graham? Tweeted the other day that, you know, they should stay out of uh, the business of the Middle East and always trying to uh, create World War Three. So here's what I think. And, you know, I make predictions from time to time. This isn't a prediction, but I'm just starting to connect some dots. This will seem ludicrous to many people, I understand. Al-Qaeda, Daesh, ISIL, IS, ISIS, various names for basically the same group of people. They've changed around, there's been a little bit of morphing over the years. I think they were created by John McCain. And I think that Lindsey Graham is John McCain's protege. I think that John McCain has gone over to the Middle East and has organized these people. He's done many trips. He has had photos. There's a big story, you know, Google John McCain photographed with ISIS leaders. Read the Breitbart story. Read all of it. Not just the first half. Keep going. Read all of it. And see some of the inconsistencies that are coming out of John McCain's office. Now, that sounds ludicrous. Did I really just say that? I did. I think John McCain is the creator. Now, he may not be the ultimate person behind it all. He may be working for somebody else. But I think John McCain created ISIS. I, I know you think I'm nuts. Let's see how that plays out. Those of you that have been following me for a little while know that I'm eerily correct on things. So intuition is important, right? I try to be very objective. I leave my a priori at the door. In other words, I leave my preconceived notions of how things should be at the door. I, I want to be as absolutely objective as I possibly can. And that means that uh, the glasses, the filters that we see the world through, I try to put down. I try to take them off. I, I am, just like I explained with Iran, if you can show me the evidence that they really are sponsoring terrorism around the world, well, I'll believe it. That's fine. I just want the evidence. Okay? I think that's a fair request. Well, when I look at what's going on, I start connecting these dots. Why does Donald Trump hate John McCain so much? He, I mean, this guy is a war hero, right? He's a, he was a POW for many years. And this guy has gone through hell. And here is a presidential candidate, and now even a president, says the meanest, nastiest things about this man. Who does that? Now, okay, Donald Trump attacks Rosie O'Donnell. I mean, you know, but she's fair game, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, but, you know, but a war hero? I mean, John McCain? There's something going on there behind the scenes. Donald Trump, very, very long-time friends with Rex Tillerson, who is now Secretary of State. 
Well, Rex has been working in the Middle East with these countries, organizing the oil, legally of course, uh, for a long time. Rex Tillerson knows things about what's going on in the Middle East that you and I, we, we just don't have access to. The media is not going to tell us. The media may not even know. I really believe that. I believe John McCain is the creator of ISIS, the creator of Al-Qaeda. You may think I'm nuts. Let's see what happens. Um, if you enjoyed this, uh, this is a short one today, isn't it? If you enjoyed this, then please share it around. Um, you know, a lot of people will think I'm a lunatic for saying this. That's okay. That's all right. I thought about it before saying it. I told one of our proud servicemen last night, told him a little bit about what I thought. And then I thought, you know what? I think I'll share this with everybody because I think something's about to go down. I think John McCain's in a lot of trouble. I think he's a traitor. I think he's going to be tried for treason. Interesting days ahead of us. Before I go, let me just finish with the war, with the bombings. It's coming to an end. I'm confident in this. It's coming to an end. It's not going to be immediate. It's going to be fast, but it's not going to be immediate. It's still going to be happening this time next month. But this time next year, I doubt it. We're about to enter a new era of peace and prosperity. This is going to be a great time, not just for Americans, but for the world, for the Middle East. The greater problem is not terrorism. It's not radical Islamic terrorism. The greatest threat that I see is the birthright in Islam. The birth rate is absolutely tremendous. At the current rate of growth, this will be an Islamic planet by 2050, 2055. This is a culture war. This is the second American Revolution. Have a great night.